What's up team, it's Joe Mill here back with you with Killer Miller Q. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, we got a short video that I'm gonna bring to you today. We've been doing a couple good cooks that I got to bring to you along with a couple that I didn't feature. But with that said, before things get too bad, we're gonna put in a little bit of work on this smoker, get it cleaned up, get a little bit of maintenance going. That way we can keep it for a long time looking good. Right off the bat, let me bring you in on the ugly, my beautiful grill, man. Still looks good. With that said, there has been a few good rains out here in Arizona, so we're just going to take a lap, and I'll give you a kind of quick inspection before I do anything on how we're looking. Um, one thing I did notice was, like, some of these things that you, you know, naturally going to have in this area where you got the cool touch handles, you know, you get a lot of rubbing and everything. I can see a little bit of rust. We've had, like, literally a lot of, probably a good four or five days of straight rain here. Um, in Arizona surprisingly a lot of people don't think we get too much but we did so I know it's been sitting out here uncovered my cover finally came in so I'm looking forward to finally getting a chance to actually put some mineral oil on here get it all protected get it all cleaned up and then actually being able to kind of start covering it week to week instead of letting it just sit out here take this sun and get beat up and everything one of the other things that I um noticed was just in general even in my like tools and everything I can see a little bit of rust I don't know I got my a little bit of glare, but there you go. Um, a little bit of rust on my handle, so I make sure we get some mineral oil on that and clean that up. But overall, it's just a little bit dusty. Um, there's an area down here. When I did my initial seasoning, I wasn't paying much attention, and my ball valve uh, gasket already was already open. So I actually a lot of that Pam dripped out onto the floor. So I'm gonna address that a little bit today when we do our little bit of our clean. Other than that, I see some cobwebs. My rims is nice and dingy. So we're going to get all of that cleaned up, get the stainless steel looking back pretty. Let's take a peek on the inside. Now, like most people do, I usually will clean my grates out every time I use them, so they're never usually too bad. I can definitely see on the second one there's some gunk on here from my last cook that I got to scrape off. Um, but then mostly on that those tuning plates, we're going to also be using a little scraper and scraping those off, and we'll get that gunk off the bottom. Since I don't, I've only had mine a little over three months, I don't have a whole lot of buildup in here, but a lot of times you might see on these walls a lot of carbon that might start to want to flake off. If so, you want to use that scraper and scrape that down as well, so that way you don't have that buildup going. We're going to also then come back through once I get everything cleaned up and taken out of here and spray everything back down for Pam. Make sure it's all sitting there nice and coated, and um, that way it'll be ready to go for the long term sliding over here same thing I can see here on my cool touch handles and literally you can just pull these to the side and be able to take these off and then like I said I'll take some time wipe that little bit of rust off of there which is really just surface rust from scratching it and rubbing off the paint and then um, and I also got the high temp paint so eventually down the line I'll probably hit them with a little bit of nice color but today I'll just make sure they get that mineral oil on there and kind of stop that I'm gonna re-season or add some fresh olive oil or whatever type of oil you want to use onto my griddle plate so that way it stays nice and seasoned along with the top obviously spray off this glade there's a little bit of that carbon flaking we'll scrape that stuff off and uh get into this fire box with that fire box again this is something that i would do every cook but this one's gonna get a little extended because i'll actually be going in there and respraying everything out but um, obviously I get rid of that little bit of wood that's in here. Get rid of that ash. That ash is actually, you know, if you sit lash in there long enough, it'll actually help to start eating away and rusting at your stuff by itself. So good practice to always try to get rid of that. We'll get rid of all of that ash. We'll get the pan and I'm actually take the pan out, which I normally don't always do. Um, only just to make sure that the ground of it is uh, also get a little bit of a pan coating and uh, we'll get everything together. So I just want you to see a little bit of what it looks like as it's dirty. We're going to dive into this thing and get this baby popping. All right, let's get started. So there's one thing I did already. I wanted to give it a couple minutes to sit. I sprayed a little bit of simple green over there on that oil I was talking about I was going to work on to kind of start working and breaking that up a little bit as we're going to get that up. And uh, one of the first things, while I don't want to get my pit overly wet, um, I do want it to get a little bit of moisture. And for me, man, I'm out here in Arizona. There's always a lot of dust 
uh, floating around. Like I said, we've had a couple rains and everything. So I just want to get a little moisture on here so that way we can knock off some of that dust. Someone's going to hit it with a little bit of this water hose, get a little mist on it. Knock off some of this front end. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little more than that. We'll give it a once over. Also, I'm going to do this first just because at the end of the day, this will actually get more time to dry out as I'm going along and before I get over here with my mineral oil. Just a once over. Get everything nice and wet. You see that's on there pretty good. And these are gonna be some of the areas where I can't get to as easy, so we'll spray those out really good. Get some dust and cobwebs up out of there. And I'm gonna come through. I got a mixture of just some good old fashioned Dawn, nothing crazy, a little bit. I didn't really wanna put too many chemicals on my smoker if I can uh, help it. So, literally, just a little bit of Dawn, dishwashing liquid, and some water. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a light wipe down, knock off any outside dust, dirt any type of oil or anything that's on there first before we get to the point of me actually putting on the mineral oil so that's that there i'll probably hit that spot a little bit more with some simple green just so we can, can be sitting there the whole time by the time i get down there to the rack then i can spray it off one more time and then wipe it all down and i'll bring you back in here in a second Damn. just like that all right so all we did was we got that little bit of uh, dawn dishwashing liquid in there pretty heavily diluted with water because i really didn't want to end up with it too streaky uh you can tell everything definitely looks a lot cleaner than it just was i'm ashy for sure um but we got a good wipe over on everything you go old pro tip just like washing cars save them rims for last we rinsed them off but uh take care of this smoker more or less all the way around even though i guess you don't got to really worry about no brake dust or nothing crazy like that but uh Pretty much save them rims for last, come back over them with that same little water and soap and, and came in and knocked out a little bit of that dust in between them. I mean, if you're going to go ahead and have these nice rims on there and get that off-road package, go ahead and treat them like family. You know what I mean? Take that time and, and, and put a little shine on them. We'll make a real special ending on them too. So basically, we got everything nice and cleaned up. You can see that uh, Simple Green worked pretty good down there getting up that gunk. That I have from that initial uh, oil spill or should I say that Pam that kind of ran out when I had that ball valve open so that's pretty much the top of that I wanted to get that done first so while I took the time to kind of wipe it clean and dry um, it can get a little bit of time out here just to kind of sit and further dry out before I actually start to put that mineral oil on next thing that we're gonna jump into is gonna be over here in this firebox and cleaning it out uh, which is pretty simple Everything that I use, I'm going to make sure that I got a link in for the Amazon links where you can get a hold of it. Most of the time, there's three, four of them in there. So worst comes to worst, you could easily toss it. Definitely, it's going to be things that you only use outdoors. This is what I absolutely love, especially because it's a little ergonomic for cleaning out my ash pit. Normally, on the day-to-day, -day, I pull it out, and I never even have to take the whole pan out. I'm able to just kind of clean the pan out with putting this in there. But uh, today, I'm actually going to be taking out the whole pan along with respraying everything thing back down so first thing that i'm going to do is remove these couple a little bit of logs that i do have in here i'm gonna brush away all of this ash and we're gonna get it nice and clean and then i'm gonna be throwing all my ashes into my fire pot and uh, i'll bring you back when everything's nice and cleaned out and kind of show you what it looks like and then we'll get into respraying it and all that good stuff after we get to the back end all right, so we halfway home. I just wanted to kind of give you a peek at what we were looking at, and I wanted to show you on why I wanted to make sure I go ahead and take this pan all the way out. Why it's not much ash down there. There is a little bit. Since I'm doing a good clean, I'm going to take this full pan out, get all of that ash out, and before I put the pan in, I'll spray out the whole box itself, then put the pan in already sprayed and everything else um, along the way with the fire management box and also I wanted to bring it in just kind of show you why I like this ergonomic tool and the handle normally on my day to day cooks and when I'm just doing a basic clean and I'm cleaning out the ash box I never even have to take this pan out pretty much all I'm going to be doing is using it shoveling it and it's going right over here into my ash pot always keep those ashes in a solid tin type pot after you take them out of your smoker, you'd be surprised at how long you'll get a couple embers that'll last and they'll keep on going. So good to nice have something like that on hand. Pretty much I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the rest of this, sweep out it all real clean, clean out the bottom. It'll be nice, nice and clean. 
And then from there, like I said, we'll spray it all down. I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll get over there to the parts, spray all of them, kind of get them back in, and then we'll get inside the cooker. All right, team, so this is what everything looks like now that it's all cleaned out. I even took my blower after brushing off all my sides, the walls, and everything, and just kind of gave it a quick blowout. One thing that I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to go ahead and take all the, the while well, everything is taken out of here, I'm going to spray it down with Pam. One thing that I'll throw out there that I didn't do on the first time, when you do your top, it doesn't take much, and then you, I didn't really think about the runoff that you're going to get, especially once you get heat in here with that oil. So I would probably rub this on versus spraying a ton of Pam on here. I actually got some runoff spots. Luckily, they were on my door, so I really wasn't able to see it, but they was my first little spots on my pit, so I wanted to cry. But at the end of the day, it ended up being something that was super minor, not a big deal. If anything, I address it later on with a little touch-up paint. But uh, this is what it looked like. We're going to go ahead and spray it all down. Make sure you get inside these wells and everything so those all still move well. Uh, get this thing all nice and ointed. And then I'll kind of give you a peek at my parts here. I took them top. This is my firebox, or I mean the uh, griddle. Flipped it over scraped off all the uh ash and some of that carbon that was starting to build up on the back side of it with my um barbecue grill grate scraper i also cleaned off my grate and everything that was over there and then pretty much i got everything laid out because i'm gonna be getting ready to spray it all down i kind of lay it on top of each other so hopefully i can save some of that pan most of it will kind of lay on top of each other i'm gonna be doing front and back side on both putting everything back in there we're gonna clean out the inside mineral oil out so we got it good now. Got went ahead and seasoned that back up. Got some Pam on it on both sides. A little bit on the top end. Doors all wet. Insides all cleaned back up. Everything's gotten a good layer of Pam on it and put back in. So we're more about half, more than halfway done. We'll clean out the inside chamber, which should be quick, fast, more or less. That's just going to be scraping and getting rid of everything. And then we'll spray it down for good measures. And I wanted to, before I cleaned it up, show you. This is what I was talking about, how that oil will over time pull. You can see some of it has dripped already down onto the ground. Let the uh, time to let everything kind of soak in, sit in one place. And then just keep in mind that you're going to come back. And I just got some paper towel. And all I'm going to do is come by. I just want to wipe this trough so I can get a lot of this access. I'm sure once uh, I get cooking and everything, I'll get some more. So I'll keep an eye out for it just so it doesn't run down the side of my pit or something like that. But uh, just something to keep in mind. Something that, like I said, I saw before. And uh, I'll make sure I pull your coattail on it so you don't end up running into the same thing. Um, and then obviously, I think it's always probably best to think of it as a long-term thing that you're going to probably spray this thing often. So you can go with a light spraying and then maybe you don't have to overcoat so you don't got so much drip off. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump on the inside, get it all scraped out, and we'll be good to go. All right. First things first on this inside, we're going to do the basic and easy stuff, which is we're just going to clean off these grates, give them a good brush down, take them all the way out. Um, and then that way I can make sure that I brush both sides of them. Um, and then also I'll be spraying these with a, a layer of spray. And then we're going to get down there and then I'll show you how we'll scrape off um, the tuning plate. Look at all that flavor. Or not. All that good old gunk. So what we're going to use is cheap and easy tools. You know, I think I got this in like a, a pack. And again, I'll make sure I got you my link. Sorry if it gets a little loud. That I grabbed it from. And I'm usually on Amazon. So everything I use... I'll always put it in the description so that you'll be able to go ahead and grab it. I'll also make sure that I put together a small list of things that I use as far as products for today's cleaning and maintenance video. So you can check that out in the description and I'll make it easy on you. But basically all I'm going to do is scrape off these tuning plates. And I'm going to let all that gunk just collect right there at the bottom. And being that I haven't waited that long, it's not that much. But with that said, I'll flip it over and make sure I get the other side too, which you can kind of see. And with that said too, I could easily slide that right over here. Make sure I threw my bag in because I know we're gonna get some nasty stuff out of here today. It comes right off. You can actually still feel that layer of grease on there, but I can feel some areas where it's pretty dry. So we basically gonna be building that back up. Let's just toss it out of there, make it easier. Get rid of that. Some leftover brisket or something and over time that stuff starts to build up and it actually man it, it'll start dipping into your your food and your taste you know you don't want this stuff in there this isn't that build up that uh, it actually makes your smoker 
have that natural smoking taste. That's that nasty stuff. We get rid of that. Um, you know, another thing, you know, even though obviously I'm doing this and I'm trying to take good care of my Lone Star because you spent good money for it, keep in mind, this is something that you can do on any offset smoker or any smoker that you care about and that you're trying to maintain. Um, I know I think back and truthfully, you should probably be doing that on some of the cheaper ones even more because of the fact you know the metal's not as thick and you know it's probably not going to last as long. These you can probably get away with a lot more of neglect just because of the fact it's so heavy duty. However, like I said, if you're going to spend this much money on it, you should probably take care of it. But I know when I had my other offset, I had huge problems with rust and so on and so forth. But with that said, after the initial seasoning, I never touched any of this stuff. So if you're doing it just on a general offset smoker, I would think it would still be good. A lot of this buildup is actually what ends up causing your rust in the long run. So take the time to go ahead and get rid of this from time to time. It'll make you a lot cleaner smoke, uh, a lot of cleaner cooks rather. Um, and then with that said, this build up and this stuff, it's a lot quicker when you don't have as much. So take the time. I'm just kind of scraping off the sides of these walls. I'm going to flip them over in a second. I'm going to get the back side and then we'll dig into the belly. All right, got the tuning plates all out. They're over there, been scraped out, cleaned out. Now let's look at this gunk that we got in the bottom. Now keep in mind, I haven't even put water into my pit yet. So this is literally just build up now with that said i'm sure a couple of the times i recently just had some rain and my stuff was probably my top was probably still open so i probably got some pour in there but you do got a lot of grease and build up so all i did was using this scraper which you can see got pretty dirty again stick with something that's cheap this one's plastic i can wipe this off wash it off real easy with a little dishwashing liquid and some soap and this is going to be something that's only getting used outside or i can just toss it literally only cost me a couple bucks so not a big deal from there, this is great though when it comes to scraping all of this stuff out of the inside. While I didn't really have a whole lot of carbon buildup, it's also one that I did take and you can probably see some of the lines that I did scrape all along the outside. I had a little bit of buildup and a little bit of carbon that came off over here on this side. But in general, all I'm gonna do, shouldn't be anything that takes too, too long. I'm just going to get rid of everything that I see. A couple ways that you could look at doing this. Obviously, we're going to scrape it down one way or another. You got your ball valve drain. So I got some stuff gunking up there. That you could rinse everything out and just empty it out through the drain. The one thing about that, though, is if you get the bottom of this pit wet, you want to take the time to make sure that you dry it out really well, as well as also make sure that you take the time to get it seasoned back up really well, so that way you don't get that rusting at the bottom. I don't plan on doing that just yet. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a towel, soak up the majority of this sludge pretty easy that way, come through with some paper towels and pick up the rest of it. And then what I'll do is one of the times when I actually got this thing cooking and it's nice and warm and everything's kind of really liquefied, I'll open up that ball valve and get that little bit of stuff that's in there to come on right out. And then maybe on the next time I do the seasoning, I'll actually do more of a deep, deep clean. But right now on this first time, like I said, I haven't been putting water in. I'm going to go without it. I'm just going to get up all of this liquid goodness. If you can see right there, which is just nasty, man. We don't need this stuff in the pit. That ain't giving me no moisture. That's not giving me no seasoning. That stuff's got to go. So we're going to get rid of that, clean this thing out, and I'm going to bring you in here before we put all the products back in and everything's cleaned out. Bam! Clean that baby out. Wasn't too, too bad at all. My little plastic uh, scraper broke, but like I said, only a couple dollars. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Ten times better in here. Like I said, once I get my next cook going, I'll let that little bit all heat up in here. Maybe some more pull towards the bottom. Then I'll go ahead and let that last little bit out right there. But other than that, we got all the nasty, gunky stuff out of here. And this thing actually looks like it's got a nice little seasoning going on. But with that said, we're coming back in here with them racks, them tuning plates. We're going to spray everybody down. And uh, we all good on the inside, baby. And then from there, we'll go ahead and get that mineral oil on the outside. And like I said, we got a special ending. And this baby should be looking platinum. We halfway there. More than halfway there. We clean. You can tell from afar, we already looking good. But you know we got to put a little extra hammer on that thing. I'll bring you back in here. We got all the grates back in. Everything's all oiled back up. 
Uh, you probably can't get the greatest view with this little bit of glare, but there you go. Got my tuning plates in there. They shining like white diamonds. Got them all cleaned up. Make sure that you hit both sides, oil them down on both sides. I took a second to go ahead and already start wiping away some of that grease that I noticed start pulling. Once again, for me, once I close this top, it was right in this area. And then also, uh, I'll re-wipe back off this fire door on the inside, as well as uh, I have something catching a lot of the drip that was coming in right here. But other than that, you can already see I got dust back on here from as I was cleaning the firebox and everything with just a, a damp cloth. I'm about to quickly give it a quick once over as far as a wipe just to make sure all of that stuff's off. We're going to put that mineral oil on here so we can get that shine going. We'll hit some stainless steel cleaner or some multi-surface cleaner on the uh, stainless steel. And then uh, we're going to take care of the rims. All right, we got it all wiped back down. And I'll tell you what, it looks pretty damn good already. I'm happy with this. So a couple things is before I go to throw this mineral oil back on there. Like I said, all I did was take a nice uh, hot towel with hot water and just took a second to just wipe everything back down. Make sure I don't got no residue left back on here from the soap, any dirt that was left or anything that might accumulate a lot of that ash and stuff like that as I was cleaning out the box. Got all of it back out and already it's looking pretty good as you can kind of see. But now we're going to go ahead and put the finishing touches in. Quick thing. One reason why I lined that garbage can, and you can see all the gunk that came out of here, I ended up using one of my, that pan that I, or the dust pan that I actually used for my uh, ash and cleaning out the ashes and used to scoop up a lot of that stuff in the inside. Uh, again, I'll show you my link, but I got like five of those for a little bit of nothing. Maybe that was a $2 purchase, so I just went ahead and tossed that to the good. It is what it is. But uh, looking at this mineral oil that I'm using, um, this one is again something I found on Amazon. I want to say it wasn't much more than 20 bucks, but uh, this is what we're going to be using on the pit today. I'll be using a little microfiber towel. That way I don't get too many uh, scratches or anything like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of give it a nice polish down. Wipe it down real good. One thing that I remember them saying was as you get to the firebox to really make sure that it's a thick application on the box and I could definitely see that especially on the door um, because this is where all the heat takes and you know normally this is where your rust will start to form and everything so putting a good coating on and then when you actually get to your cook um, getting this on there while it's still on there a little bit wet letting it go into there and that metal starts to expand will actually let it go ahead and uh, do a little bit better with uh, seasoning it and kind of soaking into it. But overall, man, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results on how everything looks. One thing that I'm going to do before I actually go ahead and hit with the mineral oil, that way I can do a quick cleanup if I have a need to, is I also want to make sure when I do my deep cleans, I make a habit of hitting my joints here. One of the things that they said that you can use is any type of food grade uh, cooking oil. Alright team, we got that done. Took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but it's okay. At the end of the day, I'm happy with what came out. If you haven't, take a second, hit that bottom right corner, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, follow along for the next cook. We're just getting started, just kicking things off. But uh, let's check out what we did. And there she is, all said and done. We put a couple hours in, but this thing looks absolutely beautiful. I tell you what, it was almost therapeutic taking the time to actually put this mineral oil on there and finally getting to see this thing nice and shining and then feeling just a good oil that'll be on here that I know is going to be protecting it out here in Arizona when we got crazy sun. So having something on here to fight back and then now I'll start making sure I get this thing under the cover during the week. A um, couple things that I will bring you in. I'll take you around let you see how everything looks. Uh, when it came to doing my stainless steel shelf, and my uh, decal, I didn't want to put that mineral oil on there. I know it says that you can technically, but I've also heard or read that long term it kind of becomes like a sticky residue that can also attract lint, attract dirt, and so on and so forth. So I didn't want to play with that. I just used a multi-surface cleaner or a general stainless steel type cleaner. Came out absolutely great. And then also, instead of actually spraying directly on here, which means a lot of that stuff is going to also spray off onto the grill, spray on the rag, and then take your time, especially when you're wiping through this decal. It's a lot of raised there areas that I can see that if I'm not paying attention your towel starts snagging in there and before you know you'll be pulling it in there and then kind of ruining your decal but uh I don't know if you can see the shine on this baby but let me tell you it is gleaming and it might be a tad wet right now so I know it's not going to be like this all the time but this will be great for overnight to sit and enjoy this sheen hopefully I don't get no rain or nothing too crazy with dust um, you can see my spot down there is nice and clean. Took the time to get my grade all oil back up too. Uh, 
did it all over. I even took the time to go ahead and go through and clean up my, my pokers and my fire tools a little bit and make sure that they got some maintenance on them too. Give this thing some love. You put a lot of time into it. I know I told you at the very end I was going to kind of more or less save my last little trick, which was any of my Midwesterners, people that's used to washing their cars already know, man, you got some rims on there. Take the time to wash your rims. Hit them babies with some tire wet. It goes such a far way. At the end of the day, I hate seeing the ashy tires and then, you know, you got a clean car. Car ain't clean until you go ahead and take care of them tires. It's almost like your haircut ain't done until you actually get that lining, if you know what I mean. But with that said, this is what we put together today. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we're going to jump into another cook soon. Stick with me.